Hello everyone, Kyle here with a Valentine's Day message. I recognize some of you have nobody this special day, but I want you to think of Captain America and be inspired. Be reminded that in Marvel's Avengers, he has no body too. <laughs> Damn, even Steve Rogers hates the skins in this game so bad he took his whole body off. You know what I'm talking about? You've seen Face Off, but have you seen? Okay, okay. I made a meme yesterday, and I'd like to try out my basic YouTuber impression. If you guys will, uh... <clears throat> what is up, guys? Marvel Avengers is so good, and everything is good, and nothing is wrong. The, the game got patched. <clears throat> it's it's a weekly update, so we, we have new skins, and... <clears throat> No, no, it's it's okay, you know, it gr it's growing on me. It's, you know, it is what it is. Please press my like button and leave a comment. Two days until the deep dive, though, man. <laughs> <laughs> if you believe people like Caboose. Don't be surprised if at the end of the War Table deep dive for Hawkeye, it just mentions, oh yeah, the DLC is available now. Oh my god! Then apparently the update could be coming the same day. Damn, does that mean that the patch that's gonna unlock the challenge modes again is, is coming with it? Or, you know, the Play Avengers Twitter said that they'd be reversing that. Honestly, this game, it needs a normal war table, alright? Addressing the dozens of issues that have gone unresolved for the past five months. As interesting as flexing 4K and 60 FPS on a next-gen build is, I'm more interested in whether or not they've ironed out a lot of the performance and stability issues, specifically regarding gameplay in multiplayer. I'm not even talking about people getting kicked. If you've ever played in a multiplayer session, you know damn well what I mean when I see that visual soup, that just blurry N64 crap. I'm wanting to see less of that. But enough valid concerns. Let's get into that wild speculation. My predictions for the showcase include crossplay. Crossplay was one of the few things mentioned in the last deep dive, which to date has been the only war table since launch. Depressing. Campaign replay. Finally, we can return to the Helicarrier mission since the Harm Room update, whenever it's coming, may not even include different environments for the holographic room that y'all have. My god. As I've said a bunch of times in the past, the Harm Room should have the ability to look like anywhere in the Marvel Universe. Nobody cares whether it's been introduced in your game's story or not. Decorate a single room like Asgard, Latveria, Atlantis. Atlantis, Wakanda, a floating platform in space, and we'd be cool with that. It would be an instant favorite place for people to bust their photo mode crap. It'd give the game so much variety, and you know, I, what more is there to say? That's just me using my brain though, you know what I mean? My next prediction is a hero reveal. We already expect Black Panther, you know what I mean? Can't wait to see his default skin because they better do this right pads riot shield plating any of that armor bullshit that's a hot hell nah from me and i'm not gonna pretend to downplay my reaction you understand <laughs> oh boy i better get the blood pressure medication already because i'll shut this bitch down you know what i'm talking about and while i'm on respect the player base dares you to release a black panther without comic book identical skins i dare you to disrespect the character Chadwick so charismatically portrayed by making the broke-ass, no-tech, armor-plate-wearing Hell's Kitchen version of Black Panther the default? Tell me this is a concept that hit the cutting room floor. Tell me that this is really like a killmonger I'm looking at. Instead of you deliberately refusing to choose literally any version that people would know and love because you're so allergic to what works? Man, my next prediction is that there will be some sort of showcase for the loot overhaul um, and potentially loadout saving, things like this to incentivize people to actually get back on that hamster wheel. There's really nothing worth kind of running after right now, and that kind of sucks. Uh, another prediction would be more villains and at least one endgame mode to be bundled in with 
uh, the Hawkeye DLC. They need to show off at least two brand new villains as well. Not old villains like Modoc, but now he has a cape. You know what I mean? I'm talking brand new um, and people to beat up in the villain sector. To be honest, my dream would be if this game said fuck it to voiceovers for certain characters. And if in the harm room, we could just beat up like a random choice from a dozen different comic book like C and D list villains. I think that'd be cool. I know I'm not the only one who's been dreaming about potentially going up against the wrecking crew, whether it's in the harm room or, uh, you know, out in the wild via some sort of patrol or Manhattan scenario. It's a real shame. When this game had a lot more people, you know, we'd spitball these ideas and people would agree with it. It's a shame that we don't have an incarnation of Patrol because everyone would appreciate that. Destiny established this seven years ago at this point. Respawning enemies, chests, mini missions for faction experience and speaking of factions, they need to remove the faction XP cap. Let players play as much as they want and give them repeat quests to go on for XP. Allow Polychloron or even a slim chance at patterns and shit like this to drop when they level up their XP, when they level up past level 20. You know, this isn't even a prediction. This is just something I want because it's that easy for me to not shut up and be passionate about this game. But we got people in the comment section talking about, man, you hate this game. And I gotta deal with these illiterate, confused people in here, you know? I, it, it, bruh. I predict an emote wheel and MCU skins will be showcased. This should be the top fucking priority behind the scenes, specifically because this is how you gonna be making this game profitable. I'm honestly kinda scared because the designers, they need to tweak some of these skins to make it so that they look good on the models that they have. Oh boy, for the cinematic universe outfits, I mean. I'm hoping to God that they're smart enough to secure the potential future characters that are gonna be coming down the pipes because, you know, you'd, you'd think it's a no-brainer, but look at where we at after five months. You'd think it's a no-brainer, but look at where we are. Um, MCU skins, frankly, aren't enough either. They need to, they need to manage some comic book accurate skins, not comic book inspired for people who don't know the difference, you know? Love or hate Fortnite, they get it, boy. They know what's appealing. They know how to offer a skin that is frankly a big time variation or departure from the other skin. It's not a palette squap. It's not, look at this different color. Crystal Dynamics team has a billion golden tickets and is saying hell nah to the money. Out of all the heroes they could choose to focus on, they rolling with non-Avenger Kate Bishop. Spin off Avenger Kate Bishop, please. You'd think these things would be at the top of the priority list, but Jesus Christ. Another prediction, and this is a big one. It may not be included in the deep dive, but it's my prediction for the actual DLC is that there will be a surprise hero edition made unlockable through the story. I'm predicting a non-Hawkeye hero being unlockable as part of the DLC because when this game first came out, I feel like they needed to pump something out fast and I swore that with the game state they would throw out War Machine because I figured his design was mechanically similar enough to Iron Man that you know the least amount of work needed to go into him to prepare him to be ready but <sighs> I know it may seem like wishful thinking but that would shut some people up, myself included, if they just dumped two heroes out as part of the next DLC and then revealed the right things. Come on, man. Y'all gave yourselves 19 days from this announcement to make some shit happen. And if the DLC doesn't drop on the same day, wow, Lord. Especially when you know that what you drop is gonna need to be bug fixed. The last prediction that I have is a boring story. And I know that's kind of mean, but let's be real, the campaign story was pretty generic, you know, tame, sad compared to Marvel, the Marvel you know. If you know any comics or even the movies and the TV shows, think about it. I'm not trying to be, I don't want something edgy, but what WandaVision is adapting in the way of House of M, 
has her irrefutably villainous implications. Scarlet Witch is like abducting, holding people prisoner, men, women, children, resurrecting corpses potentially so she could play house with them. You know what I mean? Disney's down for that, bro. Disney. So why isn't this game a little bit more edgy? Y'all told this tame ass inhuman story, which is hot knockoff X-Men. Or are you gonna say it sucks because it's a teen game? Let me, let me, let me stop you right there. Teen games are sexy. Ultimate Alliance 2 adapted the Civil War story with Marvel heroes taking sides of Tony Stark and Steve Rogers. Uh, the, the Iron Man side, <laughs> had Mr. Fantastic develop a literal body control injection thing to force villains to fight on their side. Now, from a certain perspective, it's just a fun excuse to be able to play as villains, but it also blurred the line between right and wrong in a way that forced you, the player, to question Reed, Stark, anybody else who was like complicit to this. Look, I love you, thank you for watching, Join me on Tuesday, we do this live reaction thing. Let's discuss it, you know? I'm interested in all perspectives, so jump in the chat. Let's, you know, let's see what's up. Dia plays a game where she's on an island and she redecorates while a bunch of animals walk around. And then one sheep she likes because it has a dumb face. She just loves it, that's it. And I'm just like, if I circumvent the AoE and watch for the dash, I will have a small opening during which I can deal the attack damage necessary. But then I must dash and kite her around the room, being careful to avoid the projectiles coming from her during one of her attacks, as well as the mobs that spawn in. Is that fun? Yes. For me? Yeah, it's fun.